All right. Hello, hello, hello. Glad to be here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Prospecting Masterclass. Today, I'm coming to you today. To cold call or not to cold call. So in the several next minutes that I have with you here, I want to welcome you. I want to thank, thank you for coming. And today I am sharing, should I cold call or should I not cold call? Now this is the prospecting masterclass. We come every 4 p.m. Saturday, sharing the message of sales, prospecting, business expansion, sharing your mission through using outbound sales strategies. Now you can watch us live or you can watch us wherever. If you ever want to register, I'll probably put the link down below. And um, let me just check that we got it. Okay, perfect. We're rocking. Now this message is to, to all of us, to anyone in business to business, anyone who sells, to anyone who sells a product. Now who this message would really come across with are those people who sell to other businesses. A lot of my friends in, on Facebook, they do a lot of business to business sales. And this is a great strategy for you to expand your business and get more clients and bottom line, make more money. <clears throat> Perfect. Now for all those people that don't know who I am, my name is Kevin Padillo. I am the president of Leads On Demand. And my company, we're an outbound sales agency where you can hire our team to get you sales. So we do this in two ways. We do this through cold calling, which is what we do and what I'm about to talk about. And we also have a team that will go into your LinkedIn and send out thousands of messages per month on your behalf booking you appointments with people interested in buying your product. Now, if you're interested, contact me for the next 45 minutes. I'm gonna be going deep into how to this. And I'm actually, uh, if, you're, if you're wondering where I got this content, this is all based on um, some information from a book actually. It's called uh, Fanatical Prospecting written by Jeb Blunt. Jeb Blunt. I do not know how to say his name, but he wrote a great book, it's on sales. I really I highly suggest it. I'm gonna be sharing my takeaways. And this chapter is about to cold call or not to cold call. So grab the book, it's called Fanatical Prospecting by Jeb Blunt. You could get it on Amazon and get it wherever. Uh, I don't sell his books, but you could get it wherever. And highly suggest if you're looking to grow your skills today. You ever find yourself saying this? Never cold call again. I'm never gonna cold call again. Before I go deep into this, I want if you're watching me live, drop a comment down below. Let me know that you're watching me live. Let me know that you're here. And even let me know what kind of business that you're in. And by you putting, letting me know that you're here, um, it just helps actually grow this feed and more people will see this live stream, more people can learn and more people like can, you can start making more money, especially during this hard time. Thousands of businesses are struggling. Thousands of businesses are shutting down every day. Can't even pay rent. Can't even supply their own business because they're running out of sales. They're running out of revenue. I wanna give you free information today on this. So if you drop at least a comment or you put a like, more people will see this. So thank you in advance. <clears throat> Never cold call again. Maybe you've heard someone say that. You know, I'm never gonna cold call. I'll never do that. I hate cold calling. I'm not gonna do cold calling, this sucks. Well, you know what? A lot of people say that. But me, me and my team have personally grown our business to six figures 
in the last year, you're doing this exact same, same thing. So leads on demand. If you look at my own agency, we're already at six figures in the whole year. Next year, our goal is seven figures. So that's a million dollars in revenue. Now, in order for us to do that, we need to take action. And it's doing cold calls, doing things you don't like. Because look, in business, you're going to do things you won't like. I'm inside a business right now. I think it's called uh, Zachar W. Welt. Or I don't know how to say this, but it's an amazing restaurant. I think they sell uh, Mediterranean and Lebanese food. Now, I'm guessing, I don't know the business owner. I don't know who owns this place. But I'm, my guess is that when they started this business, they had to make calls. They had to call someone. They had to call suppliers. They had to call customers. They had to call the real estate agent to buy this property. They had to do all these things to set their business up. They had to negotiate with the mortgage. They had to negotiate with the commercial real estate agent. They had to call all these people to build their business. And then they had to call people to buy the furniture. They had to call people to get all the supplies, the yogurt, the food, the meat, the coffee. Someone had to make a call. So if you don't believe cold, if you think cold calling is dead, then I think your business is dead. Because look, there are so many different ways that you can grow your business. And this is a, you know, no, never cold call again. That's fine. You can, you can never cold call. And that's fair. Um, and if you don't, maybe I can learn from you. You know, maybe I can humbly learn that you uh, have a great business and maybe you've never cold called and you can prove me wrong. But a lot of people say that that's okay. But then there's other people that say cold calling is the only way. You know, cold calling is the only way. The only way to grow your business is cold calling. Uh, I don't entirely agree with this because I don't think uh, my, my mentor, Grant Cardone, he is, he's a grown his sales agency and his business to millions of dollars. And even he's already at a billion dollars in um, assets under management. He has real estate. So even a dude like him, he's still making cold calls. And he once said, never rely on one flow. Never rely on one flow of action. So don't rely on just calling. Don't rely on just advertising. Don't rely on marketing. Don't rely on different things. Never rely on one flow because there's so many different flows and it takes a whole group effort to invade. When they needed to invade Nazi Germany, the Allies need to come with forces in multiple armies, multiple soldiers, multiple tanks to come from all different directions to attack the enemy. Now, if you just come in from, the, from France, you're gonna, you might lose a battle. But during World War II, they came in from all different directions. They came in through France, through the Netherlands, through Poland. Then the Russians came in from the east. And then people came from Italy. And they even had parachutists drop from the air and drop into the sky to attack the Germans. So they had multiple actions going into this to attack them. So if you think cold calling is the only way, there are so many different ways, marketing, um, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, billboards, newspaper ads, um, using a, a sandwich board outside, you know what I mean? Having a sign in front of your business, that's another way to get customers. But cold calling is not the only way. So you're probably asking, hey, which one is best? Now in this book, um, the takeaways that I got here is like, you know, Jeb, Jeb talks about, hey, he talks about the two different types of people. You know, the cold callers, people that just simply cold call or simply people that are just like, hey, I don't want to cold call. I don't want to do that. It's, you know, it, it's, it takes too much time and effort. And you're probably thinking, which one is best? Now, I'll be honest, I don't know every business and I'm not a billionaire and I'm not a trillionaire. And I'm not a guy who is, you know, grew up billions of businesses. I know what has worked for my clients. We have about 56 clients right now that trust us. 
to grow their business. And I know that we've helped them. You know, like one of the clients, if, if, you're, if you're from Vancouver, maybe you know the Georgia Strait. Um, it's a massive newspaper in Vancouver. They have thousands of boxes all over the city. And they've, uh, they're actually partners with us. And they've hired us to call, cold call for them. And to, so far, we, in like two, two to three months, we've already generated $20,000 in revenue for them through making a phone call. You know, we didn't run ads. We didn't buy a billboard for them. They gave us a list. Our team would cold call them. Mostly it was just me. <laughs> and we had a, I had a team as well of sending out emails. But it took an effort. And cold calling is the way. But then there's also businesses that it doesn't apply for, right? Such as McDonald's. You know, McDonald's doesn't have to cold call. They're a restaurant. They have a massive brand. Everyone knows McDonald's. When people are walking by, they see a massive M. And then they see the colors, yellow and red. And they're like, yo, I'm hungry. I want a cheeseburger. And that's good enough marketing. You know, they've grown their business multiple times. And they don't have time to call each and every customer that comes in. They get, billion, they get millions of customers every month or every day, actually, coming in to buy a cheeseburger or french fries or drinks that, look, it doesn't matter. They don't have time. They have a brand. People just come to them automatically. So, you know, maybe that's not the right way for them. Every business is different, such as a real estate agent. Uh, I know someone that sells furniture, chairs. Their ways that they promote is different from us. But I know starting off cold calling is great. And it's one of the most cost-effective ways to get new customers. Now, let me give you five things against cold calling. As you can tell, you can tell on the screen. Um, I have cases against cold calling. Cases against it. Okay. So these are cases against it, everyone. If you're watching, oh, I just realized I just screwed up here on my, uh, I just made a mistake. Sorry, everyone. So let me give you five cases against cold calling, against and why you should not do it. Mm. It takes hard work. I hate working hard. Working hard sucks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love working hard. But look, maybe you're thinking that, look, hard, cold calling is hard work. And it, it does. You know, I set a goal for myself to make 100 cold calls a day. When I was working for one of my clients, I had to make a hundred phone calls a day. And that took me like almost all day because I got distracted. I got like, I was avoiding it. You know, I got distracted by Instagram. I was like, oh man, like I don't want to cold call. It sucks. It's hard work. Too much effort as well. Number two, too much effort to pick up the phone because you have to also build a list, uh, build a list of numbers. Maybe you go on Google, you have to find people and also do research on that people person. It takes too much work. I'm lazy. Maybe you're lazy. Uh, maybe you don't want to spam people. Oh, I don't want to annoy people. I don't want to be that person that's like, oh man, I don't want to be that guy who is like always annoying someone or someone picks up the phone and they hate me. <laughs> they don't want to talk to me. They don't want to spam people. Because I get it. Look, I hate those telemarketers. Maybe you get a telemarketer from another country, for example, India or the Philippines. They're like, oh my God. These guys keep calling me for money and maybe it's a scam. They try to ask for my credit card or maybe they say they're from the government and they try to rip me off. You know, you don't want to be that person or have that business and that reputation. Number four, you're talking to disqualified people. You know, people that aren't serious. Uh, you know, for me, my stats are if I'm making 100 phone calls, I'm going to book three to four appointments. That's like my, my ratio. I'm not the best cold caller. But what I know is when I'm talking to 100 people, four people are going to be interested. So what that means is that 96 people, 96 phone calls 
96 different people did not answer me. Or maybe that's half because I double call them. But 96 people did not answer their phone or, 90, or a, a portion of them said they're not interested. A portion of them hung up on me. A portion of them said, hey, look, don't ever call me again. Some of them even swore at me. They're like, you asshole, like, don't ever call me. Like, do, you know, some of those rude people on the phone that just like scream at me, you know, they're like, hey, don't you ever call me again. Or they just hung up. You know, you're talking to people that aren't interested. Or the last one, it might be a weaker effort for B to C. You know, Netflix doesn't cold call. I don't think Netflix cold calls. Um, I think maybe starting off they cold call. But if I'm not sure if they're calling everyone that buys Netflix or everyone that buys Disney Plus or everyone like that walks inside Shoppers Drug Mart. I've never gotten a phone call from Shoppers except if it's a pharmacist. You know, because they sell B2C, they have massive amounts of volume. Maybe they just rely on advertising, ads, billboards, whatever. So cases against it. Now, let me tell you. So let me know what you think. If you have um, any disagreements, things that you don't agree with, put it in the comments. Let me know what you think down below. Why cases against cold calling. I'd love to chat. As much as I think I have all the answers, there's always smart people around me that have something to say, and maybe I could learn from you. Now, let me give you five reasons for cold calling. Now, honestly, I put more power and emphasis into this chapter because I believe in cold calling. I like it. <laughs> I love jumping on the phone, and it improves my communication skills, confidence, public speaking, and also being rejected. If you can handle rejection, you can do anything in life. Earlier today, I was standing on the street corner of, uh, of Vancouver's busiest intersection. I was with my friends and we're promoting God. And we're talking about Jesus Christ. And we're talking about the word of God. Look, hundreds of people denied me. They laughed. They're like, yo, this guy's a loser. God's not real. They said all these things. And look, I confidently stood there. Look, it's okay. You know, if they don't believe in me, I'm still going to be positive. I'm still going to be like, hey, God still loves you. You know, it's okay. You know what I mean? I'm not. But if I got, you know, upset and butt hurt every time, I would, it would not be fun. You know, and if I got upset, I would just like start crying in the corner. Or I would like go inside and just be like, I hate life. Or, you know, if I wasn't good at rejection or if I never made cold calls, I would have gotten severely upset because look, I got all these people walked by and laughed at me. Some of, some of them swore at me. I'm actually going to go back after this call. I'm going to go support my brothers. I'm going to go promote Jesus Christ on the corner. And look, people are going to deny me all day. Out of all the people in the groups that walked by me, I would say five people actually accepted what I had to say. And they supported me. And this confidence can come through cold calling. So now give me, let me give you these five reasons for cold calling. Number one, more contacts. You're make, the more contacts you make is more business. The more phone calls that you make, you'll get more people interested. If you're making five phone calls a day, that's great. Hey, you know, maybe one of them will be interested. That's a 20% conversion rate. But let's say you 10x that and you made 50 phone calls per day. Let's say you made 100 phone calls per day, right? Let's say you built a massive sales team and they're making 1,000 phone calls per day. How much money would that make you, right? Because let's say all the phone calls, let's say for 1,000 phone calls, you got 20 people interested. And maybe you got five sales from that. 20 people. And let's say the product that you sold was $10,000. That's $50,000 that you made from making a thousand phone calls. 50,000. Imagine that the more calls you make more business. By the way, second number thing is it's free marketing. Me, I'm a frugal entrepreneur. I like to save money. 
I don't like spending money. I like to stay cheap. <laughs> I'll be honest. I like being cheap. I don't like to buy a lot of things. I don't like to, you know, me, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a super rich looking dude. Like I have a jacket that my dad gave me. I'm wearing pants that I got from uh, the thrift store and boots I got from the thrift store. And I'm using a laptop that I got from like almost 10 years ago. I like to save money. And being a business owner, you're going to have to learn how to save money and like be frugal and be a little, people will call you cheap. They're going to be like, yo, this guy's cheap. Your employees are going to call you cheap. People are going to call you cheap and it's okay. But the more profit that I have, look, it's free marketing. Cold calling is free. You know, to pick up a phone call, to pick up your phone and to make a phone call is free. Maybe the only thing that you need to pay for is your phone bill, which maybe is a hundred to 200 bucks a month. You know what I mean? That's a phone call. Even if you don't have a phone plan, you can get a free app. Maybe you can get a free app on the app store and get a phone number from your phone and go to Starbucks every day and just make a phone call. That's hundred percent for free. Now, if you don't have a, a phone or you don't have an iPad or you don't have an iPhone, that you can make calls, get a phone, bottom line. <laughs> Just get a damn phone. <laughs> it's a great investment. If you're trying to run a business without a phone, there's pay phones wherever. Or maybe you can borrow your someone's phone <laughs> until you make enough money. It's free. By the way, it's low cost marketing. You know, Ad spend on Facebook, you know, thousands of people spend millions and billions of dollars on Facebook. The reason why Facebook is a big business is one of the biggest businesses in the world. You know, they make billions of trillions of dollars. I don't even know how many trillions of dollars were given to the wealthy, especially during COVID times, thousands. So many people are on their phones looking at Facebook or Instagram and they see ads. More people are because they're spending time at home. You know, they, yeah, the people are more spending more times looking at their home. So it's low cost. Making a cold call versus spending a thousand bucks on marketing. Which one would you do? It's cheaper to have a, have a, to call someone. Now, number four, improves confidence and courage. You know, by making phone calls, it actually strengthens me. It strengthens me to stand up and say the dumbest things and still be okay with it. You know, it'll make you more confident. It'll, it'll give you the confidence to talk to whoever. It'll give you the confidence to call someone. And if they say no, you will still be okay. It'll give you the confidence to maybe go talk to that girl that you like or talk to that guy that you like. Or maybe, yeah, talk to whoever and have a conversation with someone. It'll give you the confidence to get a job where you think it's scary. It'll give you the confidence to, you know, ask for a raise. And I know there's even employees here, so maybe they could hear my voice is that, hey, asking for a raise. Look, hey boss, look, I want two more extra dollars an hour. You can only get that confidence is if you test yourself and test your confidence and courage. And cold calling is one of the best ways to strengthen your courage. The last one, it's the number way to one number one way to make a sales and appointments. Maybe you might disagree, but you know, I, I like doing this. There's probably better ways to make to get business. But if you're starting out, this is the best way, cold calling. It's one of the best ways. So let me give you a couple solutions instead. And are you guys liking this or what? Are you liking what I have to say? If you are, let me know. Let me know if you, if you really like it because I see people here. There's five people watching me on live. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please drop a comment. Drop your name. Let me know that you're here. Please let me know that you're here. That way I don't feel like I'm alone. I hate being alone sometimes. So drop a comment. Let me know that you're watching me and that you're um, enjoying this, my five friends. 
and for everyone watching the replay or people watching this, you know, when they, when I leave, um, go ahead. So here are solutions instead of cold calling. These, I think I gave you six solutions instead of cold calling. Number one, you can use social media. For example, you can use Facebook using messaging. There's something called Facebook Messenger and they have made it so easy for you to find a customer on Facebook. If you sell business to business, you can find your customers inside Facebook groups. If I wanna gift you from this one gift of God, it is a Facebook group. You can go inside a Facebook group. You can find people that would wanna buy your product and you can message them. Using Facebook, you can go on there and find people inside a Facebook group. Let's say you sell to, let's say you sell, uh, what do you, let's say you sell spinach to healthy people. You sell spinach. I love spinach. You gave for spinach. It's really good for you. Let's say you sell that. I'm a, I'm a business owner that sells spinach. Now I'm going to go inside. I'm going to ask myself, who has my money? One of my mentors, Grant Cardone, he says, he, asked, he wants to ask you, who has your money? If you're a business owner, who has your money? Whether that's a healthy, uh, for me as a spinach business owner, who has my money would be someone who eats healthy food, maybe a fitness expert, maybe a people who go to the gym, people who work out, you know, people who love eating good stuff. So I'm gonna to go to Facebook groups and I'm gonna find these groups. Boom, okay, I'm gonna, I can find um, fitness experts in Vancouver. Workout Vancouver, I can, go to, I can go to Facebook right now and go to, and um, find workout in Vancouver, social media messaging. And then I could message people and tell them like, hey, look, I have some spinach. Can I give you a free box? You know, some people will say yes and some people will say no. Some people will not even reply, but some people will. Social media ads, you can use ads, pay for advertising, you know, and then more people will see you grab attention on Facebook or Instagram, TikTok, Tinder. If you sell to guys or even if you sell to women, young women, you can get an ad on Tinder. You know what I mean? Let's say my, I'm a, let's say I sell protein and my goal is to attract guys. Be like, yo, buy my protein, dude. I have some protein after you go to the gym, use this. A great customer for me would be someone on Tinder. I got so many of my buddies are like, yo, I'm gonna go on Tinder. I'm gonna go talk to some girls. They spend a lot of time on Tinder. <laughs> Young guys love Tinder, man. <laughs> okay, I don't really use Tinder. I'm uh, I'm gonna be lonely forever, so I don't use Tinder. <laughs> so I don't fucking. <laughs> so I'm gonna use Tinder, and young dudes are gonna be. They just swipe, swipe, swipe. And maybe I can put an ad there. Hey, protein for lifting, bro, or use this to get attract the girl you want. And it's a protein bottle. And maybe it's a picture of a ripped dude with sunglasses and looking cool at a party. You know, ads, advertising and branding. Like I said, you can write articles, um, podcasts. You can do all these different things to advertise and brand yourself. Uh, if you want any information on this, I'm happy to provide this. Send me a message and my team will contact you. I do have a couple options to help you for branding. Funnels. You can use funnels as well. You're going to have to use funnels with ads in uh, branding. Funnels is basically a website you can go to, and there's only one intention. The intention is to sell, or the intention is to get your information. So for this is an example, um, using a funnel to get like a book. You ever seen those things that, hey, get your free book or here, or grab your free, free coupon, or I don't know, grab your, grab the seven steps to, here's your seven steps to, um, having white teeth, <laughs> you know what I mean? I need, I need that actually a little bit. <laughs> so 
seven steps to getting white teeth. You know, you're going to see businesses that have free, like they give out free stuff, but what they want is they want your information so they can contact you. Then after they're going to either text you or they're going to email you, or they're going to be like, yo, dude, come, I have a promotion, buy this for fucking half off today. Um, door to door, you can do door to door. I did door to door once or twice. I still do door to door today. I just haven't done it in a while. Um, door to door, especially during COVID times. Hey, if you want to get, this is actually the best time to do door to door. So many people are scared of COVID-19. That people are like, oh, I don't want to, a lot of business owners are thinking small. They're like, dude, I don't want to get COVID. And they're scared. They're living in fear. But look, imagine if you did door to door. No one else is doing it. No one else is knocking on doors and going into business owners and be like, hey, like I got this to offer you. Just make sure that you're healthy and you're safe and that you're not an idiot and you're like not sick and trying to go door to door and then you're spreading it and you're going to be killing people. That's not okay. Just make sure you're healthy and then go door to door. Then the last thing is, look, this is what my team does. You can outsource it to leads on demand. You can get my team to do it for you. You can hire our team. We have packages that you can hire us. Uh, you know, our packages start off at two to $3,000 a month. Um, and if you're interested in a couple options, just send me a message and I'm happy to help you. Uh, we can talk about options to help you and grow your business. My goal is to help you. So here's another thing, everyone. Both and, how can you have both? How can you have both advertising making it easy how can you be have the lazy way you know being lazy but also how can you make it easy for yourself now the first one is like having funnels that pre-qualify i talk about funnels all the time how many qualifies that <laughs> having funnels that pre-qualify um so having some sort of website that you know when pete when someone hits your website or they're interested in your free guide, you can ask them questions and you could be like, how serious are you in buying? You know, how serious are you? There's a lot of people that go to a website and they're like, yo, they're not even serious. Maybe there's on a scale of one to five, there are one out of five. They're like, they're kind of interested. They're, they're, they're looking for an idea, but they're not ready to buy right there. You know what I mean? Maybe there's that one person that's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested, but maybe they want to buy next year. They're just like doing research now. Or maybe there's someone that's ready to buy. You can ask them a question. Hey, in, inside the website that you're going to ask a question, how ready, how, like, when do you need this? Oh man, I need this tomorrow. Maybe your car broke down and you need a new car. You can ask that question and all of a sudden, boom, you get an email notifying you. Hey, look, this guy wants it right away. Let, let me call him. I'm going to cold call him. Boom, now you got a lead. Now you call him. Boom, now you have a sale equals revenue and money for you. Um, number two, having funnels that qualify. <clears throat> Actually, I already, I already just spoke about that. That's repeating myself. I just repeated myself. Um, number two calling leads that are generated and more warm you know you can have you can you can call people that have bought from you before you can call people that have showed interest before maybe you have a list of these people it's always important to keep track of all this data everyone have a crm i have a crm as well um, i use zoho all these different crms that you could use to track all your data i use spreadsheets you know google sheets um, like I said, I'm cheap, so I like to save money. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Google Sheets. I'll put all the data inside. I have my customers' names and numbers. I have people that said they're interested in before. Um, their numbers, their emails, and what they were interested in before. You know, I'm going to have leads all over. So always have a list. And then you can have a both and by having marketing and sales by having two teams. One team dedicated to marketing, one team dedicated to outbound sales. Now, a great example of this is a team in Miami. Their business makes about $8 billion. 
eight billion through all these different companies. Now they have two teams. One team that does marketing, one team that does outbound sales. So they have a whole room. I used to go to that office. I went to that office once. Great guys. They have one room dedicated to people who's helping get attention. They help with marketing, podcasting, getting people known, um, ads. They run ads. They have all these Instagram stuff and content, all the stuff that you look at. They have a team dedicated to marketing. And then the next thing is they have a team dedicated to cold calling. They have a whole office. It's like a boiler room. Maybe you've seen that movie. It's about, I don't know, boiler room or all those sales movies about those guys making cold calls. They have a whole team dedicated to that. So the marketing team is helping out the sales team. They're giving them leads, people that are interested. Those guys are giving those leads. If you don't know what a lead is, lead is someone who has expressed interest in what, you're, what you have to buy. They give that lead to the sales team. Now the sales team can call that person, can email them, can reach out and be like, hey, how can I help you? Or what are you looking for today? Uh, you know, what kind of information can I get you? Outbound. And by the way, look, sales is not annoying people. Sales is not, if you want to find out about sales, people think sales is annoying and like being a spammer. I hate people that do that. You know, people that just simply talk about their business and they talk about benefits. A good cold caller will ask you what kind of problem you have. Hey, what problems can I solve for you? What can I help you with? What are you looking for? You know, why do you want this? You know, what's important to you? A great cold caller will ask you those questions. You know, what's important to you today? You know, uh, you know maybe they'll ask, what's your budget? You know, what do you want to buy? Um, what do you need? Right? They ask you all these different questions. And then they have a team dead, yeah, uh, to marketing. There's that. Now, let me, let's break it down to the art of interrupting. So this is on chapter number three by fanatical prospecting. The art of interrupting. Jeb Blunt, Jeb Blunt talks about this. If you like this, if you like this, let me know. Let me know that you like it because I'm giving you tons of value here today. Tons of value. And I'm excited. I'm, I'm grateful that I could help you. I believe in helping. The art of interrupting. Now in this book, I just read it about a couple minutes ago. He says, you must interrupt. No matter what a cold call does, you got to interrupt someone out of their day. You know, they weren't expecting you. They weren't looking for you. Or maybe some of them were. But most of these people that you call, your customers, are interrupted. So with 56 of my clients, 57 now, I think be, another client signed up yesterday, is the art of interrupting. These clients, you know, they weren't expecting me. They are going throughout their day. Maybe they're living their life. They're running their own business, doing their own thing. But someone had to interrupt them. Most of the times it was me or my team or my sales team would interrupt them. And you interrupt them, you know, people go out their day. You, they're interrupted using by a phone call. Someone had to make a phone call to them. I called them. Someone called them. Or maybe someone messaged them on LinkedIn or on Facebook or someone texted them or someone emailed them. They're living their day and someone interrupted them. Boom. That's the art of interrupting. They're coming into your life. They just suddenly showed up. Now, how to interrupt. This is how you interrupt someone's day. Now, I'm not saying this in a rude way. Don't just suddenly just be an a-hole and just like choke them with your product. You could do that, but there's different times when to do it and when not. But here are six ways to interrupt someone. You message them. You reach out to them. You cold call them. You call them, you reach out, hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Leads On Demand. The reason why I'm calling is I want to help you make more money. Are you interested in talking? You know, some people say yes. Hey. Number three, you can knock on their door. 
back when I was selling home security, you know, my, my, one of my uh, clients as well, his name is Brian. He made about $5 million in sales. He, he not, what he, what his team did, he would knock on their door and be like, Hey, I'm in the neighborhood. Do you want to buy some home security? So those people that sell home security, sec- alarms, locks, um, things to keep your home safe, they would knock on their door and be like, yo, look, what's up? No one was expecting them. You know, no one wanted them to come over. But this person showed up, interrupted their day, cut in and was like, hey, I have this. Do you want to buy it? Door knocking. Intrude by a visit. They maybe had a personal visit. You know, uh, I used to do a lot of personal visits. I used to visit my clients. I would drop by their office. Uh, back when I was selling um, TVs, uh, I used to sell advertising on TVs uh, inside doctor's offices. And I would go to all these different businesses and be like, hey, what's up? I just wanted to drop by and say hi and introduce myself. I wasn't there to pitch. Maybe I'd do a little bit of pitching, but my goal was just to visit and be like, hey, I want to shake your hand. I, by the way, this is one of the best ways to sell. Go visit someone because they're always going to remember you. I remember this one guy who came by. I was working at a car dealership and this guy came by and he, he, he wanted to come see me. And he dropped by, he gave me this brochure about like different tints for, for cars and, you know, stereo systems. I never bought, but I always remember him because he actually took time out of his day to come visit me. I've worked at so many different places, by the way. I've gotten fired from a lot of places. <laughs> I've done sales in almost every place. And I've gotten, <laughs> I've lost those jobs. <laughs> I've learned the hard way. But I intruded by visit. Mail, by the way, handwritten notes. When was the last time you got a handwritten note from someone? It was like, hey, hope you're having a great day. Here's a gift. You know, it wasn't annoying. It was just like a note. Or maybe it was like a gift, like a free bottle or a free iPhone case. Something free, a gift, you know, like something personal. And by the way, the more time you take it takes for you to create that gift is the more likely people would be interested. It's the law of reciprocity, guys. If you invest time into a a client, they're going to feel that energy. They're going to be like, yo, that's cool. This guy took time out of his day to give this to me, to write this note, to write this letter, to buy stamps, to get an envelope, to put that stuff together. He took time out of his day to do it. And you didn't type it. You didn't like, type it out and send it mass. You actually took time out of your day to do it. That's a really great person. Email, you know, sending emails. You guys all know what emails are. All right. So I got a couple minutes left. I have a promise to meet someone in about a couple minutes. So I'm going to wrap it up. This is the last slide, by the way, if you like it, let me know how to start cold calling. Five ways. I'll give it to you quick. Cause, uh, I'm screaming my head off in this restaurant. I'm, I bet people are just getting annoyed. <laughs> How to start cold calling. Five ways. Start warm. Start warm. Start by, you know, starting somewhere where you know someone. Maybe you already know that person. Maybe they're your friends. Maybe you can call your mom and your dad. You know, someone that you know. The most important thing is to make that call. Start making that call, guys. Start making those phone calls and be like people that are warm to you, people that know you already, power base. That's where you can start because it'll help you build your confidence. By the way, if it's scary for you, do it. Fear is the great compass. If you are scared of something, go in that direction. People always ask me, look, what should I do in my life? I always tell them, Go towards fear. That will grow your confidence and that will make you great for the world. So go towards fear. Number two, start by doing something easier. Look, I get the cold calling is scary. It's terrifying for some. I've been there. I still get scared of calling. I still get scared. I hate it. I'm like, fuck, this sucks. But I'm going to start by doing something easier. Maybe I'll start off a warm up. I'll call someone else that I know. 
when I'm cold calling people, I like to call people that are scary because, hey, man, who knows? Maybe that person can be my first client. You can call people who have already bought your product, people who you've already sold, people you've contacted to sell clients. You can contact those people, people who already know you. By the way, if people have already bought from you, they're more likely to buy from you again. If they've given you a dollar, I read a quote, they're like 33% more likely to buy more from you. And the more times they give you money, the more times they trust you, and the more times they'll buy from you again. So me, I'm a, I like McDonald's. I like cheeseburgers. <laughs> I'm always gonna, I've, and I've bought in them from all my life. So I'm gonna always go to McDonald's. I'm always gonna go to McDonald's until I have a bad experience with them. But I'm always gonna trust them as long as you know I know them, I trust them. I'm gonna keep buying from them. Uh, for example, here, I don't know what this place, it's called Zatar WZ8. If, let's say I live across the street and I see this place and I have a great experience here. I've, I've, you know, they're great here. I got a bottle, bottle of water from here. Let's say I come here every morning. Boom, I get a coffee. I boom, I get a donair. Boom, I get a salad. Boom, I get some sort of uh, food. And I keep getting a great experience. I'm going to keep coming back. I'm going to keep giving them money. I'm not even going to hesitate. Maybe I'll tell my friends about this place. Maybe I'll tell people about buying from here and eating here. Maybe I'll even host an event here where I can bring hundreds of people and they would spend thousands of dollars on food here, supporting this business. Your clients are the best people. Pick up your phone. Pick up your phone and start dialing people. Oh, bottom line, look, just make the damn call. Just do it. You never know where it's going to lead you. And last way is a great way to see it is see how many people would reject you. See how many people would reject you. That's your goal. I want you to set a, a goal of, I want to see how many people can reject me. Instead of seeing, oh, how many people can like me and buy from me? I'm going to find people, how many people I can reject from and make a game out of it. Oh, hey, that's great. A hundred people rejected me today. I just got a good score. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because who knows, man, if you, have that if you have that objective, you flip the script. You will see it from a different view. You know? It's crazy the power of framing. Framing, by the way, is just how I set the intention. It's just like how I set the setting. Make it easier. So as I wrap up everyone, today I talked about how to cold call or not to cold call. I talked about many different ways, whether you should call, whether you should not call. I talked to you about this book by Jeb Blunt. It's called Fanatical Prospecting. Go get the book. It's a great book, by the way. By the way, the best cold callers, the best salespeople, they invest in their self-development. They're always learning. They're always growing. They're always strengthening their skill. And also people, by the way, they're always like, what should I invest in? I have a bunch of money now. What should I invest in? Should I invest in Bitcoin or real estate or stocks? Should I invest in all these? My answer is no. I would tell you to go buy a book or go get a course or get a class or go to a seminar. Go grow your skills, man, because you are the best investment. I learned that yesterday, I was on a webinar, my friend Jerry, he said the best investment is yourself because you are the one that's guaranteed to make money, um, not stocks. Get stocks and, and like real estate later, but you are the best investment. So even me, I'm gonna go buy a course later. I'm gonna go buy a course on wealth and how to create wealth. So I'm gonna do that by just like, take like, you know, buying the course. I'm kind of, I'm scared, I'm scared to spend the money, but I'm gonna go invest in myself because I know I'm the best investment that I could make. I talked about cold calling. I talked about against cold calling, cases against it. I talked about, talked about cases for cold calling. I talked about different solutions instead. How you can have both calling and both ads. The art of interrupting. How to interrupt. I talked about how to start doing it. How to get started. Just to make the damn call. I talked about all these different ways.
So I want to thank you for all checking me out. If you do have any questions, put it in the comments down below and I'm going to message you about it. If you would like to register for the next masterclass, we're here every uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. I am here every Saturday sharing value. So if you do want to join me, I'm going to drop the link down below and I have a funnel just like I preach. I practice what I preach, by the way, by everything that I share with you, I do it. I do it myself. Okay, copy. I'll put it down below. Boom, let me put the link down below. Register for the next class here. Boom, it's a free class guys. It's all free. I wanna give you tons of value. So I just wanna make sure I serve you and do you right. And maybe one day you'll do business with me and you'll choose to work with me and my team. And I can be a solution for you and your business. So thank you for watching on this day. I'm praying for all of you, praying for your business, whatever religion you believe in. I thank you for watching whatever business you have. You are amazing. You will be successful and everything will work out for you. If you're going through any fear or uncertainty growing your business, I tell you and I assure you, It'll be okay, and it will all be all right. If you follow these strategies, you will get yourself out of this hole. I trust you. My business has grown so much during COVID-19, and I want this to be the same for you. So I hope you have a great day, everyone. Uh, this is Kevin with Leads on Demand. God bless and take care.